the Florida Writer Podcast, a discussion about writing and other things. Hello, and welcome to this edition of the Florida Writer Podcast. I'm Allison Nissen, your host, and today I am fortunate to have with me Maggie Sabatier-Smith. Maggie, how are you today? I am excellent. Looking forward to this time with you. How about you give me 60 seconds to introduce who you are and what you write? Okay, so we know that long name, Maggie Sabatier-Smith. I am a woman on purpose and on fire for helping others achieve their own purpose. It's about authenticity. It's about being intentional. It's about owning your life. And I'm a communicator. So whether I write or speak or coach, the message is always the same. I own my own company, Call to Action, which started out as a life coaching practice and soon will be evolving into a broader speaker platform. And I do some health coaching. I'm always busy about something, but the theme is always the same, helping you be you, growing to be the person you were meant to be. That's my story. I understand, speaking of stories, that you were recently published in a book called Second Chance Dogs, the true stories of the dogs we rescue and the dogs who rescue us. I know you have a dog named Olaf, and he is the star of your story. Can you tell me about Olaf? Olaf became famous with this story, and Olaf, unfortunately, crossed over to the Rainbow Bridge. We only had him for two years. I adopted him, we adopted him uh, when he was a senior, and a blue-eyed boxer, white boxer, the funniest, funkiest face. You could not help but laugh just looking at him. He blessed my life in particular. I didn't realize how much I needed to be loved until we rescued Ola. We have another dog, Beagle Bailey, who's a Beagle Bassett. But for some reason, I was compelled to have a second dog. And when I fell in love with Olaf, he just had to come home with us. Uh, And it was two years and it was a struggle because uh, within a year, he had some health issues. We were able to give him two years of a very loving life and it was worth it. So, and he made me famous too. We hit the road with our little book and um, it was a blessing. What's the book about or the story? The book is a collection of stories on the topic of rescuing. And my story, it's interesting how all the things I'm involved in came together. I, I'm very involved in prison ministry. And because of that, they had a heal, heal to heal program where uh, inmates were training dogs, uh, dogs that would otherwise be put down because nobody wanted to rescue them. And so my mentee had this dog named Dozer. It was a white a bulldog, crazy dog. And I fell in love with him. And I almost, almost adopted him, which would have been nuts because he had so much energy. But it fell through. And for a week, I was down in the dumps because suddenly my heart went out to Dozer. And as a result, on a Saturday morning, my husband said, let's go get another dog. And because he just knew that I was heartbroken. And we went out in search of one type of dog and ended up falling in love with Olaf. He just had this funny face and he just needed to come home with us. So it's interesting that prison ministry brought me this passion for, oh, I need a second dog. And I ended up with Olaf. And so the other interesting thing is that I was at a writer's conference pitching a diff- of my own book. And after the interview with a publisher, she said, suddenly, do you rescue dogs? And I said, yeah, uh, all our pets are rescues. And she said, well, I'm writing this book. I'm compiling these stories. Would you like to submit your story? And so I did. But the funny thing is that I never set out to write a story about a a dog, our dogs. And the opportunity was presented to me in a setting that was unexpected. And within months, she approved it, published the following year. So it's, it's a happy Olaf story. Is the story from Olaf's point of view, or is it about how Olaf rescued you? It's, it's really from my point of view, in terms of the, the aha moment when I realized how much I needed to be rescued. Because I had 
spent years caregiving for my parents and it had been years since I'd done that. And so I needed to be needed in the way that Olaf needed me. And believe me, he had issues, um, lots of issues. And so I was able to do some caregiving and give life to someone that probably had a very short life left. And so it was a discovery process that we just never know what opportunities are given to us. And I was able to share a story that touched hearts. So Olaf was not only a blessing to me, but he blessed others. The other interesting fact that I'll share is I put the story out on Facebook and tagged the, the place where we rescued him. As a result, the original owner found me and sent me videos of when Olaf was a baby and pictures of him. And he was so blessed to know that Olaf had a happy home. So it, it just it came full circle in terms of the influence that just writing the story about Olaf made. So something that I thought was silly, oh, look at this, I'm writing a story about my dog, actually had tremendous impact. How magical. It was, it was very much so. Those magical moments, they really inspire us. They keep us going. And it's wonderful you were able to take the story and put it to paper because that way you can share it with so many more people than you would otherwise, just being able to verbalize it. I understand you have a blog that's called To Action. That's mm -hmm. the name, Called To Action. I want to know what you do to keep yourself inspired to keep on writing the blog. That's a great question. Because I'm writing a book and the uh, publishers tell me I have to grow my platform and be consistent in blogging. So if there's writers out there, be aware that you have to be consistent in your publishing. It's been a challenge to come up with something every week. And then I committed to blogging for Chispa Magazine, which we'll talk about maybe in a few minutes. And so two blogs a week is a lot, in addition to everything else I'm doing. And so basically, you know. It's interesting how when you know who you're talking to, and I'm talking to those who need to start over, are starting over, are stuck uh, in the preliminary part of starting over in life. They don't know where to go next. As I like to say, they've reached the end of themselves. That there's always some encouragement that I can give. And so I talk about the challenges I talk about how it feels when you feel like you don't even know what your tomorrow will look like. I talk about, okay, you've started the new journey and you have this tension between what you used to be and what you're going to be and how do you reconcile that? How do you let go of the past so you can embrace the new? And there's always something. And um, something new that's happened is that I'm led to write about the places where I'm not perfect. You know, people look to you to have happy endings. And we all want happy endings, but sometimes you're in the middle of your mess. And so I just recently started, I wrote an article about um, being in the middle of my mess and how I walk through it. And the fact that it doesn't feel good, doesn't feel right, but I need to tell my audience that even I can be in the middle of mess. It's always not a happy ending. And so that's a challenge for me as well. Happy endings are what we always strive for, but you're right, life is messy and happy endings, well, in reality, we don't ever want the end to come. So we don't want the bow at the end of the package. I think there's a quote somewhere out there that's, you know, you, you want to arrive at the end, uh, not all neat and pretty, but having lived a nice rugged life and yeah. have something to show for it. I wish I could tell you the quote right now, but I can't. <laughs> so. All right. I get the idea. So Maggie, you mentioned Chispa Magazine and that you are one of the managing editors. What is Chispa Magazine? Chispa Magazine started out as a, an online magazine, beautiful pictures and subscription based only. The uh, founder, Mavian Arocha, has actually started doing more articles online. So there is a magazine you can purchase through Amazon, but I write for the website. And there's several of us that write, several of the, I write on Mondays typically. And uh, I have the, what's called the Senorita column, play on words, as I am a senior. 
And I'm a funky senior. I'm not your average um, potluck meal kind of senior. I'm always out there doing something. So I, I love to write to the younger generation and I like to write to my own generation to inspire them to do something with their life. Retirement is not, it's really not an option to me. There's always something to do and a way to grow personally. And so I write about topics like that. I write about romance in the struggle. I did a whole series on when love is not enough. So I write about a variety of topics that just appeal to women primarily, but I do have some male followers as well. So you never know. They want to they wanna know how we're thinking. Been doing this for several years, working with them. It's interesting how my writing has evolved. The editor of Chispa Magazine is a personal friend and was a big encourager. I hope everyone out there has that mentor that pushes you to go just one more step and to believe in yourself. And she has believed in me. And as a result, I just, I believe in the audience that she pulls together and that we need to just serve them as best we can. What do you find as the most rewarding part of being able to write every week? Number one, it keeps me creative because writing, while it's always been my passion, it was that dream that you put away for some day and that you don't exercise because you need to make a living, you need to raise a family. And so the habit of writing on a daily basis is, has been a challenge for me. And so the fact that I have a deadline, I'm terrible at um, long, you know, if you give me two weeks, I'll do it on the last day. I am awful at that, and I'm not sure I'm going to get any better, so I'm not even going to try to say I'm going to improve. But I get most creative when I have a tight deadline. So I like the fact that I have a deadline, that I've made my own self-imposed deadline. So it's rewarding to me to know that I do get feedback more, more on Facebook than on the blog. So if you're looking for comments on your blog, that's probably the most discouraging place to try to get feedback from readers. But on, my, on Facebook, I hear a lot from people about how the message has touched them. And that's, that's really what it's about. You have something to communicate that it's rewarding because it, it works something out in me. And then it also blesses somebody, even if it's just one person that can take something away. And as a coach, I always write and challenge them with a question or encourage them on their journey. So there's always something that I ask the reader to do, to take up and uh, be challenged and to do something more with it. You use your writing as a way to coach others. Are they also writers? Or are you coaching them on how to be better selves? I'm coaching any woman primarily who is intentional about their personal growth, who needs to come into her own. To, uh, my favorite expression is show up as you. Uh, help you be you, to own who you are, to, to do the research on yourself and to own that. And so when I coach, I'm coaching you to your personal greatness, whatever that looks like, your best, your personal best today without a view to compare yourself to anyone else, but who you are and the fact that I believe we're uniquely wired to be, to matter and that we have to do something about that. And that means do the research, find out who you are and walk in it and just flaunt it. You know, go be, use your chi spa, use your hood spa, whatever you wanna call it, just be funky and just, um, just show up and be you and make a difference. Wonderful words to hear. We always need that type of message. And especially writers, because we end up sitting in our own little corners not necessarily interacting with other people, we're often afraid to share our writing with others. The fact that you are able to share your writing on the World Wide Web and also have that be received well has to be encouraging, helps you want to write that next piece each week when you sit down at your desk. So tell me about your writing desk. Does your writing desk have anything special on it? It's a mess. Is my writing desk reflects my personality. I have many things going on. I have books that I'm in the middle of reading. I've got all kinds of things. I'm not showing you my desk, but the back <laughs> of my desk looks good. But um, 
really the tools I use are, I use Evernote to keep track of my ideas. I kind of flush, flush them out there. I, I use Word to polish it up and then I put it out there on the blog. I tell you it is, you know, it's like anything else, even when I speak, I'm always anxious. You know, there's always that moment, that butterfly moment of, do my words matter? Will, will it make a difference? Will anyone like what I read or what I have to say? But I've come to a place in my life where it doesn't matter how I feel. It matters that I convey a message and that, you know, if in the end they don't like me, well, you know, okay, that's their issue. But if, they, if there is at least that one person that gets something from it, you know, it's worth it. And, you know, even the story about a dog, you know, I really did not give myself credit for that story. And I, it was a paid article. And yet I was saying, how silly I'm writing about a dog. But it wasn't, there was so much more in it. The fact that I had the courage to submit it and to have an editor decide whether it was going to be published or not. These are, these, this is the message I give my audience. So if I'm not willing to dare to be courageous and to dare that, how could I coach anybody to do it? And so I think if you're a writer, you're going to hear something in what I write. I mean, if you're a professional woman, by that I mean somebody that's intentional about your future, you will get something from what I write. You will, you'll relate to it because I'm very transparent. The other day I wrote something about, I'm not all that in a bag of chips. And so, you know, sometimes I, I come out with very unusual um, phrases, but I do believe it, it, hits, it hits the mark it's intended to hit. And if writers out there, all I can say to you is you get your words out there and you communicate, whether it's on social media or in a blog, wherever you need to do it, you have something to say, you need to say it. Absolutely. And that's one of the gifts we have as writers. We can put it down on paper, we can take the chance that we have to edit it as well, because editing is always important. But we do get that opportunity to share our words beyond just the immediate audience that we have when we are able to write and publish. All right, Maggie, thank you so much. I'm gonna shift gears. And we're gonna to go to our rapid fire questions. Okay. Are you ready? I think so. All right, if you were gonna be a flower, which flower would it be? I would be a daisy. I love daisies. My you daisy, love daisies? Daisies are happy. I love the orange, vibrant daisy. And uh, I don't have any daisies in my garden, believe it or not. But I would be a daisy. I would just, they're happy. And they make people happy. That's what I want to be. Cheerful flower. We like that. Do you wear reading glasses? Yes. I don't have them on now, fortunately, I don't have to read, but I have a variety of dollar store reading glasses because I lose them. They all congregate together. I have two in front of me right now. They're either all there or none at all, but I do use reading glasses. And last question. If you were to open up your phone, what picture do you have on the front screen? I have a picture of Beagle Bailey. He, he is the most interesting dog in terms of expressions and he's sitting up in a chair and he, he looks like he's going what what do you want and so it makes me laugh that's what's on my phone i have a picture my husband took of a dog sitting on a bar stool at a bar with his paws on the bar and a drink in front of him and he my husband witnessed it which is why he actually has the picture because no one what? else would believe him otherwise <laughs> that's funny I don't think that the dog was drinking the beer, but it was a, it's a good picture anyway. Okay. So, Maggie Sabatier-Smith, thank you so much for stopping by. If someone wanted to follow you and find out some of the things you're writing, what could they do to look for you? Well, they could go to my blog. I have a direct link that is coachmaggie.com, coachmaggie.com. I'm on Facebook as Life Coach Maggie. So type Life Coach Maggie Sabatier Smith and you'll find me and um, on Instagram as well on Twitter call to action just call to action wherever you can find it um, you'll find me on Pinterest Instagram Twitter and Facebook that's a lot of social media I find it hard to keep up with it all 
it, it can be uh, daunting, that it's what publishers want, so I'm gonna give it to them. Wise words. Maggie, thank you so much. This is Allison Nissen. You have been listening to the Florida Writer Podcast. Allison out. Maggie Sabatier-Smith is a writer and columnist for Chitspa Magazine. She also blogs at calledtoaction.com. For more information about Coach Maggie, visit her at calledtoaction.com. For more information about the Florida Writers Association, visit us on the web at floridawriters.net.